fat and fascia around the thigh, most of you will have these inguinal fat pads that you'll need to get rid of or trim back. And where I want you to start on these dissections is at the cranial border of the thigh. And we need to find a couple of muscles up near the cranial border. And I'm just gonna clear away some of this fascia. Some of yours, especially have, if you have little cats, while you're clearing away this fascia, it's really easy to tear out the cranial part of the sartorius. And so I want you to be careful around that cranial border that you're looking for fascia and avoiding muscle. So I think we can take off all of this fascia because the cranial most muscle I want is this band right here. And the sartorius is gonna come off of the ilium, most cranially of these muscles, and it's gonna run down the cranial surface as a little band like this, but it continues along the medial surface. And so the sartorius forms a really thin sheet that runs along the medial surface of the thigh and covers most of the medial, at least the cranial medial portion of the thigh as a real thin sheet. So that's what I want you to be careful of as you're clearing away this fascia or fat on the surface. And you can see the border of it, the caudal or medial most border of it right here. And we're going to need to bisect the sartorius in order to see most of the muscles on the cranial and medial portion of the thigh. And so if you kind of work your way through it like this, around the quads, and then come in here, and work your way down. Then you can bisect it and peel it back both directions. And the sartorius uh, is an interesting muscle because it crosses two joints and because it crosses two joints, it has action at those two joints. And so the sartorius, because it originates at the ilium and runs down the thigh, <coughs> it's crossing the hip joint and its insertion is out into the fascia on the anterior surface of the tibia and probably onto the tibia as well. And so it crosses the knee joint. And the sartorius is also going from um, kind of lateral on the ilium to medial on the tibia because it's going down the medial surface of the thigh. So the sartorius is actually named for tailors, which were called sartor. And they used to sit on the ground and fold their legs underneath them and cut and sew while they were sitting there with the material sitting on their lap. And so when you sit down cross-legged, that action is performed by the sartorius. Other muscles help, but that action describes everything the sartorius does. It flexes the hip because it's running cranial to the hip joint, and it flexes the knee because it runs out onto the tibia, and it goes caudal to the knee joint. So it'll, it'll bend the hip forward, it'll bend the foot or shank inward. And because it's going from lateral to medial, as it pulls on the medial surface, it rotates the femur laterally. And so it rotates your knee outward. So sitting down and crossing your legs is the action of sartorius. And that's one thing I want you guys to think about as you're 
um, dissecting muscles, you don't have to memorize the uh, insertions, the origins, even the actions, but it does make sense and helps you identify the muscles if you think about what that muscle does and where it's originating and where it's inserting. So as we go through these dissections, I'll talk a lot about where muscles are coming from and where they're going. And in lecture, we will, we will talk about those also as muscle groups. Now, once we get the sartorius reflected, we can see a muscle right here at the cranial edge of the hip. And this is a complex muscle because of its shape and because it's attached to lots of different things. It has uh, fibers that originate from deeper muscles, etc. But it is inserting into a sheath around the thigh, around the quadriceps complex. So you can see this connective tissue sheath, much like the anabrachial fascia we saw in the forearm. And this is the tensor fascia antebrachia. Back up. This is the ten tensor fascia latte. That's the tensor fascia antebrachii up here. So the tensor fascia latte inserts onto this fascia latte, which is the sheath around the quadriceps. And it is kind of a V-shaped muscle. It's kind of triangular. It varies from cat to cat, but it for, has a head that runs down the cranial surface of the thigh. And then a, another head that kind of comes at an angle to it. This one looks pretty triangular, but oftentimes the fascia will intrude between these two arms of it and it'll look like V-shaped. And caudally, it tends to merge with another superficial muscle, the gluteus superficialis, which I'll get to in a little bit. So it can be pretty difficult to try and separate these so that you can see both of those and see them clearly or cleanly. Now the tensor fascia latte sits on the cranial edge of, or cranial surface of the quadriceps. And so we want to bisect that to get down to the quadriceps and also to start exposing the gluteal complex, which is right under here. And so when you're doing that, it's important to remember you want to make that bisection through the belly of the muscle. Don't cut across the, the fascia latte because then you'll end up with tendon and no muscle fibers attached to it. So you want to try and cut through here. And I'll show you that in a minute. But if you can, the other thing that it's kind of helpful at this stage is to clear away a little bit more on this lateral surface. And the first muscle that you'll kind of identify the borders of and work around is a large hamstring muscle on the lateral surface, the biceps femoris. And what we wanna do is see if we can clear away the fascia up to the origin of the biceps femoris, which is going to be up here on the ischium. And the biceps femoris and another hamstring muscle, the semitendinosus, are going to originate from the ischium. And the biceps femoris runs down the lateral surface of the leg or the thigh down to the tibia and it forms the lateral tendon around the popliteal region behind the knee. The semitendinosus originates from the same place, but it runs medially and inserts on the tibia medially and forms the medial tendon. So you can feel on the back of your knee, the tendon of the biceps femoris on the lateral side and then the tendon of the semitendinosus on the medial side to identify where those are. But 
before you start looking for the gluteal muscles, I think it's easier to free up the biceps femoris and we will reflect that also. Find the border here. Now with the biceps femoris, we wanna be careful because there are structures deep to it on the medial surface of the muscle. And there's another muscle that joins it on the anterior cranial border of the biceps. And so we want to try to protect those. So I'll work under here caudally. This. And then at the cranial border, where I started up here, there's another muscle that doesn't originate from the ischium, but instead comes down from the caudal vertebrae and it joins the biceps femoris. The, it joins the cranial margin of the biceps femoris and that is the, called the caudal femoralis. And I'm cutting down right along the border of it there. And so on this cat, you can kind of see where the border is between those. And if we work at that border, you can see that the, you can separate them once you find the border pretty cleanly because the biceps femoris is coming here from the, coming from here at the ischium. And the caudal femoralis is coming down from up here and joining it. And we'll reflect those and, and or bisect those and reflect them a little bit later. But the caudal femoralis kind of just merges with the inner surface of the biceps femoris and they in, in, it inserts together with that. Okay, so there, if I've got those identified and kind of cleaned away, that'll help me expose the caudal end of the gluteal complex. So this is the caudal end of the gluteal complex and the cranial end is gonna be up here underneath <laughs> the tensor fascia latte. So next, then I want to kind of pick at the border of the tensor fascia latte, and I'm going to start a cut through that and go right about here toward the caudal border of this. And most of this is going to be going through the tensor fascia latte. Back here, there is a thin sheet of muscle that you can see me picking up, and there's tendon on either side of it. That is the gluteus superficialis. And I just don't want to cut into the, the quads underneath this. So if you could hold it up about that angle. Sometimes that gluteus superficialis will be a little larger at the caudal end there. So I'm going to see if that's what this is. And then um, I want to show you this, this part of the dissection to, to try to get to the point where you're exposing the gluteal complex deep to that and then let you get started and then I'm going to 
do a gluteal dissection that'll show you how to go through and identify all the deeper muscles of the, the gluteal complex. So now I'm peeling back that superficial layer and in my left hand is the tensor fascia latte. In my right hand is the gluteus superficialis. Now our gluteus, we have those two muscles in a very similar relationship our gluteus superficialis is what we call gluteus maximus. And the gluteus maximus and the tensor fascia latte insert onto what in us is equivalent to the fascia latte. We call it the IT band or the iliotibial tract. So the iliotibial tract runs down the lateral surface of our thigh and we have tensor fascia latte coming from anteriorly and gluteus maximus coming posteriorly. And the gluteus maximus is more posterior on us because we're bipeds. And so the, the, the hip joint is extended and that's larger on us, the largest of the gluteus complex because we use that to to remain upright, to stand, and because our thighs, our femurs are in the extended um, orientation. In the cats, the gluteus superficialis is small and thin, and the gluteus medius, which is the next muscle down, is much thicker. And it's a big, chunky, fan-shaped muscle that inserts onto the greater trochanter of the femur. And so the gluteus medius is the most superficial of three gluteal muscles that all insert onto the greater trochanter or right around it. So underneath the gluteus medius, if we look at the cranial margin, we can probably see a muscle that has a shiny fibrous connective tissue surface that looks like kind of like a tendon or a sheath and that's gluteus profundus and you can see the difference between gluteus medius and gluteus profundus on the cranial border in between those is a, a thin triangular muscle called the piriformis and they tell you to find the piriformis by cutting down through the gluteus medius. I don't want you to do that because then it looks like jerky or pulled pork and you end up with fibers going all over the place. And it's hard to tell the difference between gluteus medius and piriformis. If you go to the caudal border and now would probably be a good time to bisect the biceps femoris and the caudal femoralis. So if we separate underneath that and make sure to separate this big ischiatic nerve or sciatic nerve, which runs along the ventral surf or the medial surface of the biceps femoris. Make sure, if you cut through it, that's okay. We're gonna cut through it later. But if you can avoid that, all the better. But we can go down about this far. And biceps femoris is a big chunk of a muscle. And that way we can sort of peel that back. And that really shows you the ischiatic nerve or sciatic nerve. And the sciatic nerve will split, or the ischiatic, splits right down around here to form what in us is called the tibial and the per, uh, fibular nerves, but in them is the tibial and the common peroneal. And we'll get to those a little bit later. But the sciatic comes out from underneath that gluteal complex. And it makes a nice landmark when we're trying to separate or distinguish 
some of these layers that I just talked about in the gluteal complex. So you'll see the ischiatic coming out from underneath the caudal border of the gluteus medius. And as we look under that caudal border, we should see a thin triangle of muscle or at least part of a thin triangular muscle that sits over the surface of the ischiatic nerve and that is the piriformis. And if we cut through the gluteus medius above that muscle, then we can bisect the gluteus medius away from the piriformis and be able to see all of the layers of the gluteal complex. And again, you want to try and bisect it across the muscle fibers. And if we peel that layer we just cut back in both directions, we can see that there is the ischiatic nerve coming out from underneath this real thin triangle that's usually darker like it is on this one. And that thin triangle is the piriformis. And then deep to that triangle is a large fan-shaped muscle that goes from the tendon, oh, a little bit more I need to cut. The tendon that we saw on the cranial surface up here all the way back to underneath the ischiatic, and that's gluteus profundus. And so that's what that way you can see gluteus superficialis right next to tensor fasciae latae, the large gluteus medius. Reflect that, you can see that small triangular piriformis sitting right on top of the ischiatic nerve and then deep to that is the large fan shaped gluteus profundus. Now it's important to identify those and keep those relatively intact because then we're gonna there are one two three four five muscles caudal to that gluteus profundus and a muscle cranial to that gluteus profundus that are the deep pelvic muscles. And so this is the starting point for being able to identify those, and those continue around the caudal edge of the pelvic region and all attach onto the femur. And these form a number of fan-shaped muscles that act to, in some cases, um, they will flex the hip, some will extend, but in most cases will either abduct the femur or rotate it medially if they're in front of it or laterally if they're behind it. Okay, so go try to